Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about used cars and the challenges around buying a used car. Let's get into it. How many used cars are bought sight on sale? Lots. Well, dealers buy them on auction now. All the time. And think of how Car Zap works. Think of how Flip a Car works. And sit and don't drive it. So it's it's a matter of okay, kilometers, paint work, yes, whatever damage, but even it's pictures, it's not, you know what I mean? There's actually a lot of stuff like like the things but like oil leaks, or whatever. Well, buying a car with a roadworthy, that if it's got a roadworthy, all those issues have to be dealt with. Well, a modern transmission now doesn't even have a dipstick. And and that's what I'm talking about. Even a use, even a say my Santa Fe doesn't have a dipstick. It's a sealed transmission. You don't you never change the fluid in it. And, and that's stuff that would you would potentially do, but even I don't think anyone would go to that extreme. You know, you, you just have a quick look around the cursory look. I think you make a good point there. All those things from the 1970s uh, have to be dealt with if you're buying with a roadworthy. Now, if you're not buying with a roadworthy, then you've got to think about, okay, so how many cars have bad oil leaks? Well, realistically, oil leaks aren't a thing unless it's an English car or it's an old car. So they're the sort of things that you, from a, a vehicle perspective, so when you're looking for a car, how old are you looking? Now, if you go for the average age of the car on the road, it's 10 years. So what's a 10-year car going to have? Is a 10-year car going to have oil leaks? It might. It may be starting to have an oil leak. Now, brake fluid being down could be a brake leak, or it means the pads are wearing down, and it hasn't been topped up since. So the pads may need replacing. That's a roadworthy item. So if you buy with a roadworthy, it should be tick, 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 tick. The issues that you really want, need to worry about, maintenance is maintenance. You know, crashes, absolutely. But the uh, first thing you've got to check is actually, has it been a rep- repairable write-off? Is it on the the right written off vehicle register? So that's the first thing. The second thing you check to see whether there's finance going on it and the person selling the car actually owns the car. So you've got to do a PPSR check on the car. So they're the first thing. With 30 years experience in auto logistics and state-of-the-art locations in five major Australian cities, Precar Fleet Services are a premier all-in-one solutions provider for commercial vehicle fleet operators, leasing companies, and original equipment manufacturers. Please visit precar.com.au and click on the link to Fleet Services. I think before that is you have to check the VIN number. You are sight the VIN number yourself. Not even that. If you're buying sight unseen, it's the VIN number will tell you what the registration is. Because that it all ties up with a PPSR check, right? Before you even get to that stage, you need to ask the question: What car am I going to buy? Because you need to actually make a decision. Well, what car suits me? Like, let's use a car behind me for an example. All right, if I'm looking for, if I say I want a small car, a bit of a sporty car, what should I look for? Then you start with this set. Of, you start with a set of vehicles that fit that bill. Then you research the process of what are the reviews for those cars. Therefore, what are the issues that those cars have? You seek information from people who've had them or people enthusiasts in car clubs or whatever. Just ask the question, tell us about, what do you know about these? Oh, those Megans, they're they're notorious for cam belts under the bonnet and front hubs, which mine has, and window regulator motors that fail. All right. So if all the window regulators fail, there's $1,000. There's a cam belt, all right, there's another $1,600. If it fails, there's thousands of dollars. So you need to do the cam belt regularly. So they're the sort of things to be mindful of once you've chosen your car. Then it's a matter of, right, okay, now let's look at this particular car. What am I looking for? Am I looking for signs of damage? Has it been the crash? Is it First, I'll check if it's written off. Is there any money owing on? Then I go down the funnel further and go, right, this particular car, so it's, that's okay. What options are on this car that I'm looking at? Does it have the options I want? These come with sunroof. Does this have sunroof? No, it doesn't. Tires, are they going to be roadworthy? Is it going to be sold with a roadworthy? Yes or no? No roadworthy? All right, I need to find out more about the tire condition. I may be up for a set of brakes. Brakes are a consumable. I need to be aware that tires and brakes are consumables. I might need, need to be up for a set. Tires are going to cost me, say, 150 a tire. So six, seven hundred dollars in tires. Brakes are probably going to cost the same, another couple of hundred bucks, three hundred, four hundred dollars. So there's a thousand dollars in brake, brakes and tires. I factored that in. Now, if I'm spending right at the top of my budget for this car, 
and I'm not allowing for any extras, then maybe I need to find a different car. One that I know has had brakes done, then I'll look at the service history. What service history have you got on this particular vehicle? Show me the details of it. Then you want to have a photograph of the car running with the dash because this is why flip a car and cars out. Get photos of around the car. Show me what it looks like from every corner. Show me the inside of the doors. Show me the picture of the dash with the engine running. Because if the engine light is on, there's straight away you can factor in, there's probably three, $400 minimum to get it looked at. And it might be a couple of thousand dollars in electrical repairs. So that's why what dealers do is they straight away drop the value of that car because check engine lights on. So they go, okay, that t- that's got how many Ks, right? Does it match with the written off vehicle register or the PPSR? Yep, okay, there's no finance owing on it. Tick, 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 tick. I work the way down. Oh, I can see there's a slight paint difference with one panel versus another. That's had a race break. All right. And I haven't even physically sent the car yet. All right. So they say, okay, so that's had damage. Now, I may be happy to think, okay, it's had a dent because the key with a used car, there's only one car in the world exactly like that one. There'll be other orange ones, not a lot of them, but there's only one with that many Ks in that condition. Only one, and with those options. There may be one very similar, but it's not going to be exactly the same. It might have a slight tear in the seat. It might have more kilometres on it. It might have different condition of paint because it's parked under a tree and bird poos all over it. So this is a, that's the beauty of a used car. They're all unique. So what you need to do is, with from a peace of mind perspective, is make sure everything adds up on that car. Is it in the right condition for its age? This is how you can see if there's been a new a cluster put in it so that the odometer reads lower than what it actually has done. So that's where you look at things like uh, experienced valuers look at things like pedals, brake pedal pads, if there's a clutch like this one or, or a accelerator pedal. Have they rubbed through, showing that it's done more mileage than what maybe the odometer depicts? Or if they're in great nick, fantastic, this car has had an easy life. All right, so they're the little, little idiosyncrasies of it. If you have the opportunity of driving it, then going through the gears and making sure each gear change is what it is, and there's no adverse vibrations. But once again, looking for the things that are known for that vehicle being a problem, like engine mounts and all these other sort of things, which are becoming more and more problems with uh, problematic with modern cars because they're hydraulic engine mounts. So these are relevant. These are the things to be aware of with buying a used car. So you start with what car, what are the reviews, what are the that they're the reviews often when they're new. But then what are the reviews subsequent years on from now? You know, who's been driving them? Like if, if, if it's a car that, say, the police have been using, you can say, well, geez, they're rigorously tested. They know what, or, what, a, what a durable car is. Or if it's a car that a lot of enthusiasts buy because they, there's something about it, the people in the know buy it, they go, well, hey, that's, that's pretty good. Or they've got a great reputation for reliability. Or it might be the other way. It's really sporty, but terrible reputation for, for reliability. Now, me as a consumer, I need to make that value judgment. Am I prepared to take that risk? And if I do, what is the price of that risk? Because I may be up for an engine in this thing behind me, six, seven thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars. The car's not even is probably worth six thousand dollars. So is that worth the risk to go right? I didn't change the cam belt, the engine's now gone. There's another six grand. That car now owes me twelve thousand dollars. Is that a wise investment? Well, these are little tricks when buying a used car. So there's a lot of things even before you physically, say, pull out the dipstick and check the oil. If it's shown that the, oil, the filter's been changed, it's a regular service history, you're not checking the oil. You don't need to look inside the oil filler cap. If it's a diesel, the oil will be filthy dirty as soon as it put it, you put it in because <laughs> it's just black, sooty oil. That's what happens in diesels. So a lot of the old tricks from yesteryear uh, of uh, looking at the car, kicking the tyres and all that sort of stuff, yeah, look for, look for wear. But realistically, tyres are consumable. If there's a wheel alignment issue, you get the wheels aligned. If it needs shockers because it's 10 years old, you're going to be probably up for shockers if you really want the car to be in good condition. These are consumable items as cars get older. If you don't want that, buy a new car. A new car less than five years old, you're not going to have to worry about shockers. You shouldn't have to worry about shockers because it's still under warranty. You shouldn't have to worry about hubs or any of these items because it's under warranty. So these the the only time it really comes into play is once you're outside of warranty, and that's why the depreciation kicks in. The depreciation kicks in because maintenance goes up. Depreciation drops, 
year on year as the cars get older, but maintenance goes up, which is why the, the value is where it's at. Cars that have good depreciation because nothing goes wrong in the longer term, they are the ones that total cost of ownership is quite low. And brands that have you know, outstanding reputations for that are the, you know, the Japanese brands, the Toyotas of the world, the Mazdas of the world, the Nissans of the world, the Hondas of the world. Yeah, these are really good, good brands that have reliable products. European brands have a lot of joie de vie. They've got some great excitement to them. But when things go wrong, it can be expensive. And you know, as a car ages, things will go wrong. It's a mechanical device. But yeah, it's it's the buyer beware when as the cars get older. But the easiest thing, buy a new, buy a new car, you've got, you've got new car warranty. Buy a low kilometer used car, you still have used car warranty. Buy a car from a used car dealer, you've got no issues from a clear title perspective, and you've got a limited warranty on the car. It's when you get outside of that realm that you need to be a little bit more uh, astute with what you're buying. You can get some great value out there. And if you're selling a car, you can get, you can get some good, good prices for your vehicles if you're selling privately. And that's why peer-to-peer is such a popular thing. But it's not without risks. But if you're sensible about it, security check, make sure there's no finance owing, and then start that journey of service history options. Make sure the car is what you really want. And then look at things like uh, what's the current state of interiors and uh, and any, any uh, damage history. No one's going to say, hey, by the way, I crashed it three years ago and it had a complete front end rebuild. Very few people will tell you that. But it's up to you to have a look at it, get pictures. But ultimately, are you wearing the risk? Are you prepared to take the risk? A lot of cars bought sight unseen. You know, it's, uh, you know, the modern car is a, is a pretty cool device, but it's not without risk. Mark, in terms of your service history, can there be an issue with that? Or do you think there's normally pretty trustworthy? Once you get that service history, whatever is written in the book. If it's been serviced as per the book, it's a record. If there are associated invoices with the the stamps in the book, you know, if if it's stamped from a recognised dealer, you know, they're the sort of things you go, okay, yep. There's always more. There's always a premium for a car with books versus a car without books. That's been around since day dot. If it's got service history, uh, if it's got clear title, if there's no damage, if it's low kilometres. That's that, that. There's always a premium to those cars, so and they're they're the ones that you know dealers jump on first and foremost. You know, if you got if you've missed a few services along the way, all right, uh, it puts plants of seeds of doubt. But still, sometimes it's it, it's still been serviced with uh, franchise dealers or large uh, service groups. But you know, if there's if there's supporting data or documentation, say, hey, I had this service done, this is what they reported, and we had this fixed. Yeah, you know, that's that's you know, it's, you can only trust the documentation. That's it. I hope you enjoyed what we spoke about today about used cars and it offered some value if you're in the market to either buy a car for yourself or sell a car. Thank you for listening.